Issa. High school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, he go, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make we link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis. Walk a cup with team, I win the championship this season. Yo, Issa. Bubba Banda, if a school, I go finish the league and beat now. Which you, I go collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, Missy fans are rolling. Okay, well, it's football time now on the Sports Max Zone as we turn our attention to the Issa Schoolboy football competition right here in Jamaica. The parish of St. Elizabeth played host to a pair of water the Costa Cup encounters shown live on your home of champions. The first of which saw a round of 32 bound Black River High taking on Little London. Gerard Morrissey was on commentary and takes us through the match. These highlights are brought to you by KFC. It's finger licking good and water. Land of good and water. So here are the highlights brought to you by KFC. Full time highlights we got underway by Little London, but in the 15th minute we saw the goal after about 12 minutes of complete domination. Barnes, the man of the match, into Adrian Johnson, who tucked away the first goal nicely. The link up play between these two players were phenomenal all game and it showed the first time with this goal. Barnes finding him, Johnson a good run inside, and all it was left to do was to get it past goalkeeper Reed, who was, despite conceding five, pretty good on the day. A handball there by Alwyn Spencer, wanting to get away the ball by all means necessary, any means necessary. We thought it came off his chest initially to go, while the referee says no. And in the end, the defender, Paul Dockery, tucked it away nicely. Reed did choose the right way. He did guess correctly. But because of how neat that one was tucked inside the corner, Dockery got on the score sheet for his team. Barnes, my goodness, what a game he had. A couple attempts of his own. But because he was so commanding, he was blessed with a goal in the 30th minute. Nathan Watson on the ball, a good run by Yao Barnes, getting it right in front of the keeper, just him, the keeper and the goal, and nicely tucking it away. That was our Sports Max app moment. Looking as if he would go to the right of Reed, but using his right foot just to poke it to the left, the inside, making it 3-0. Black River were in sight of goals. They were searching. Little London had moments where they were clumsy, like this one. Reed caught off guard, off guard by that mess of defending by his team. But again, he was equal to the task. This was the fourth goal going into the half. An easy effort there by Jaden Harris. Lovely takedown. Controlling the ball, took a knock, but not enough to throw him off balance. And he made sure that he made that attempt count. 4-0 at the half. But Black River didn't stop there. They were able to manage to get a goal in the second half, early in the second half. This was an effort that we thought would have gotten them to that 5-0 mark, mark at the end of half time and uh, yeah very disappointed he would have been with himself there to not convert that but yeah finally would get on the score sheet Jaden Harris after making a mean of that attempt he had to end the second half and he redeemed himself with this effort getting it under Reed was able to sneak it past him. And finally getting on the score. She got a yellow card for that celebration, actually. But Black River, they, be, they were all over Little London for the rest of the game. It was always about getting the opportunities. And Orlando Reed was able to get one more save before the referee called it off, confirming that score, the win for Black River, who have gone on two higher heights 30 attempts for them black river 12 on target 
Little London only had six attempts, two of them on target. There were nine fouls in this encounter, five of them going to Little London. Two cards, the only two cards of the game going to Black River. And they had more offsides than Black River. Four of them to Little London's three. 14 corners, 14 corners compared to three for Little, Lorna, for Little London. Possession 82% in favor of Black River at the end of the first half. It was 85%, so Little London did well enough to get themselves back up to the 18 possession mark. Those I like to brought to you by KFC, it's finger licking good, and water, land of good and water. Yeah, so Little London pretty much powerless in trying to fend off the rampant uh, Black River who scored that very comfortable victory. Not an unexpected result because Black River have looked uh, really good in the tournament so far. Here are the thoughts now of both the coaches, beginning with Little London's coach, Jeffrey Reese, followed by Black River's Vaden Hale. I start, um, look forward to Bill for the next season because most of them are just 14, 15, and 16. We have no 17 year old on our squad just now. So a, as I said before, it's a very pretty young team really in a um, rebuilding process. The 16 already didn't play. So um, because school become a much more program, so we're actually rebuilding back now. So we're going to take up some battering just now, but it's going to be tough, but we'll be back. And we're going on the road on Wednesday, so we definitely want to just go to this game. So not game, you know that, but, right? But we got the job done and I'm pleased. We just have to stay focused now. As I keep saying to them, aim high and stay grounded. You know, because still a lot of work to do. We're looking to go as far as we can in this competition. Yeah, so great prospects there for Black River. Now, and what was the showpiece game of the day? Storied local rivals, Monroe College, took on host team St. Elizabeth Technical in front of a capacity Stets home crowd. Donald Oliver on commentary. Yeah, um, we're going to get those highlights in a, in a short while, I think. Um, that was a match that a lot of people looked forward to. I had friends in St. Elizabeth who wanted to ensure that uh, Sportsmax would be carrying the game live because it would give them the, the, the option of uh, either trying to um, confront the crowd and go watch the game live or, or watching it in the comfort of their, their, their homes. But uh, before we you know, get into that and get the highlights of that match, the Black River, Little London highlights that we just saw, pretty lopsided. And we heard Coach Reese talking there about his uh, Little London team, very young, just a lot of 14 and 15 year olds. And when you're playing schoolboy football, if you have a young developing team with players in their mid-teens up against players who are 18 years old, it, it would be a learning experience for them. Yeah, but you know, I think about it when you said that and instantly, maybe the future of Little London is bright because they're playing at this age now. They're going to be in the school for quite some time. So if we check them back in a couple of years, let's just say two years, they would have had that experience, Lance. They would know what it is to compete at this level and I think they would be in uh, a better state. So the results that we're talking about now, losing two times to Black River High, might be very different in a couple of years from now. So I think it's progress. Yeah, uh, that's certainly reasonable to expect. And that's a pretty logical conclusion that you've just uh, come to there, Mariah. So let's go over now to Stets to catch the highlights of uh, the Monroe game against St. Elizabeth Technical with Donald Oliver in the com box. As we take a look at the full time highlights here, and uh, Stets were always seeking that opener. Jordan Blake was instrumental. Monroe, they had a couple of pops on target and Stets on that occasion denied charged down by Sadiki Savaro but they would not be denied here the captain doing so well DeAndre Barnett And that was his third goal of the season. Trying to be the provider here, but his teammates unable to convert that chance. 
then right before the halftime interval, a chance for Monroe College, but was saying wins, putting it over the bar. And then they got their second goal. Allowed to make his way through and then fired an effort. Kaim Lewis, the Trinidadian with his fifth goal of the season. It was a good hit. And uh, Jason Williams do little with that in goal. By the time he reacted, the ball had got by him. A Kodak moment. Steph 2-0 up now. And then things got a little interesting. A collision inside the box. The referee pointing to the spot and uh, converting Roshane Wint, his second goal of the campaign. And the final few minutes could have been interesting. But uh, didn't really create the chances, Monroe to get back level in this match. As we take a look at the full-time stats, still as a technical with 18 attempts, four on target, Monroe College with nine attempts and a couple of them on target. 12 fouls committed by Stets, three by Monroe College. You can see Monroe had the majority of the corner kicks in the end. And uh, St. Elizabeth Technical with the majority of the possession at 54%. Those highlights are brought to you by KFC. It's finger licking good and water land of good and water yeah and uh, the schoolboy football competitions in jamaica really becoming uh, a caribbean event uh, the barbadian cleon cully was the man with the whistle the referee in charge there and there were players from tnt and barbados in the monroe team as well so monroe uh, table toppers in the group but beaten by St. Elizabeth Technical in this fixture. And that was a, a good game, a packed crowd. Stets, a very, very strong sporting school in the history of uh, Jamaican high school sports. And uh, their fans turned out in their numbers to watch them. Yeah, it's one of the matches I wish I was able to um, check out. But the good thing is, Lance, both teams, despite the result, are now into the round of 32. So the only thing um, the winning team will have is the bragging rights. But yeah. they're both in, mission accomplished, onto yeah. the next level yeah both coaches had their say on the performance of the boys let's hear them now I really think that we could have defended better throughout the whole game um don't concede those goals especially the second goal the first goal was a brilliant goal second goal i think we could have done much better to, to, to not concede that goal if we have stayed in the game that goal would have brought us back one one and then we could have maybe pushed late but we're good good to the boys as i know you know we have a game plan you know we have a first half plan we have a second half plan I know our motto for the game today was PPW, play pro farm win. So that's what we display today. And you know, we fall into a situation, we never get that ID start. But as I know, a journey, you take on a journey on the road. Sometimes the road is going to be rocky, next time it's going to be smooth. I think what happened for, to this team is um, self motivation because the spot where it is, we don't have to say anything. They know ideally what to do. And as I know, the derby live on. The Derby live on and always going to live on. As I say, PPW, play pro farm win. <laughs> Omar Rambo, whatever, a man with many, many words. Yeah. Uh, whether pre-game or post-game, he always has a lot to say. Here are the full results from the Dacosta Cup over the weekend. Cornwall College, Nilo with St. James High. Irwin beaten 2-0 by Herbert Morrison. Malden High 1-1 with Green Pond. Cambridge had a big 5-1 win over Nakalva. Green Island High beaten 1-0 by ex-champions Rossies. Froome Tech were 3-0 winners over Anchovy. Grange Hill beaten 6-0 by Manning School. Black River as we saw 5-0 over Little London. Stets 2-1 over Monroe College as well. BB Cope 10-2 over Lakovia. Magotti were 4-2 better than Newell High. Lennon High beaten 3-2 by Central High. Denbe High 2-1 over the defending champions Clarendon College. Garvin Maceo getting a 2-1 victory over the Red Hot Glenmuir High. And Old Harbour High, they got a 1-0 victory over Kemp's Hill High. Those are the teams confirmed for the round of 32. Cornwall College, Mannings, Black River among them. Spot Valley High also in there along with Monroe, Belair, Manchester High, Christiana Homewood, Clarendon College, Glenmuir, Malden, Rossies, Central, Brownstown, 
Alphonsus Davis as well. Uh, Governor Sale, McGraw, Kemp's Hill, Dint Hill, Ocherias, Happy Grove, Paul Boger High, Yala, Port Antonio, Titchfield, Stets, Froome Tech, William Nib, and Denby High along with St. Mary High. So those are the teams confirmed of round of 32 spots in the Da Costa Cup competition. So lots happening in the Da Costa Cup. The uh, Manning Cup is also on in earnest as well. But um, good football and the intensity right throughout the, the teams in the Da Costa Cup. And uh, that really was a big one on a big double header on Saturday at uh, St. Elizabeth Technical in Santa Cruz. Among the audience there would have been Mike Olivier, who is a former coach at wow. Stets many, many decades ago. Of course, he is back home in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, some people would know that he's the dad of uh, the reggae superstar Protégé and uh, had a quick word with him over the weekend yeah, as well. Because, I saw clips of Protégé. Yeah, it brought back a lot of memories for him because he had some really good times at St. Elizabeth Technical, especially in track and field where he had guided the careers of people like Winthrop Graham, who went on to win medals at the Olympic Games and the World Championship. But um, he did say it was a very nostalgic um, afternoon for him because he had so many memories at Stets. But for the fans themselves, Monroe Stets is always a big derby that fans wait ages for these clashes and Stets would be very happy that they got that result. Yeah, really, really happy. And as you said, you know, uh, having that um, presence over there, Mike Oliver, Protégé, all of that. Because I saw a couple of the footage, yes. a bit of the footage, and I saw Protégé and all of that. So, I mean, the fans, they got a taste of good football and they got to feast their eyes too on entertainment. <laughs> yeah, uh, both teams look really good, though. I thought Stets looked good and um, their coach was happy with the performance. And Monroe College continuing to show that they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Now, before we go, Let's update you on the latest in the Digicel Manning Cup competition. Uh, matches from the weekend as we approach the last phase of group stage games coming uh, this week. Kingston College 14-0 over Meadowbrook High. Penwood 4-1 over Cumberland. Campion College were 1-0 winners over Jose Marti Tech. Tivoli Gardens 3-0 over St. Mary's College. Denham Town 2-1 over Edith Dalton James. And there was a 1-1 scoreline between Wilmer's Boys and St. Jago High and uh, teams confirmed now for the round of 16 so far Eltham High, Heidel, Mona, Kingston College, Campion College, Calabar, St. Andrew Technical High, Wilmer's Boys, Tivoli Gardens, Jamaica College and St. George's College. Those are the teams so far qualified for the Manning Cup round of 16. Matches this week will be played on Friday as they uh, try to complete the teams that will be slotted in for the round of 16. So that's our football segment with high school football. Still have uh, some uh, updates to come from Trinidad and Tobago schoolboy football season. We'll be back with more on the Sports Match Zone after this break. Country and turn your night for one reason. It's a schoolboy football. Run, come, look one, look all. Which team are the best and are better than the rest of the fire team beat your chest? It's a schoolboy football. A team